In this video, we're going to take a look at fractions and finding equivalent fractions. A fraction is simply a part of a whole. For example, if we have a pizza cut in three parts, with two parts shaded, we would say that we have two-thirds, or two parts, out of the whole, which is made up of three parts. A little vocabulary with that, the parts on top, we call the numerator. The whole on the bottom, we call the denominator. An interesting thing about fractions is there's sometimes several ways to express the same part as a whole. We call these equivalent fractions, or fractions that might look different, but have the same value. For example, I might have a pie that's cut four ways, and the two top ones are filled in. That would be two parts out of the four. However, you might also notice you could think about that top as one filled part out of two similar sized parts, or one half. They represent the same part of the pie, but they might look a little different. The way we can find these equivalent fractions is we multiply by one, because multiplying by one doesn't change the value. If I take five and multiply by one, the answer still is five. The advantage of this is there are many different types of ones. We could write one over one as a fraction, and if we were to divide, because a fraction bar means to divide, one by one, we end up with one. Similarly, two over two reduces to one. Three over three, when you divide, you get one. In fact, it doesn't matter as long as the top and bottom are the same, it still will represent a value of one when we reduce it. So we'll combine these ideas of multiplying by one, these weird fraction looking ones, and we can find several equivalent fractions. If we want two equivalent fractions of three-fourths, we just have to multiply it by a one, where the top and bottom are the same, and it doesn't really matter what the top and bottom are. We could multiply by two over two. Three times two is six, four times two is eight, and we get six over eight is an equivalent fraction, the same value as three-fourths. We could multiply three-fourths by something else to get a second equivalent fraction, maybe three over three. As long as the top and bottom are the same, we're multiplying by one, so three times three is nine, and four times three is twelve, we get this equivalent fraction nine-twelfths. All three of these fractions represent the same value, even though they might look a little different. How about this one, seven-fifths? We can find equivalent fractions to seven-fifths by multiplying by some one. Again, it doesn't matter which one we choose. Maybe we multiply by ten over ten. Doesn't matter, as long as the top and bottom are the same. Seven times ten is seventy, Five times ten is fifty, and we have an equivalent fraction. We could find a second equivalent fraction by taking seven-fifths and multiplying by something else. How about eight over eight? Same thing on top and bottom, that's all that matters. Seven times eight is fifty-six, and five times eight is forty, and we have another fraction that's equivalent to seven-fifths, just looking different, but having the same value. We can find these equivalent fractions by multiplying by a one, which is a fraction with the same value in the numerator and denominator.